Gurra Mai got last can curly. Um, right, well, in, in fairness, in relation to this small company administra uh, administrative uh, rescue process, I, I think we all welcome the legislation, we all welcome the need for um, this system to be streamlined. We all, uh, I would reiterate what Deputy O'Reilly said in relation to the big issues are obviously our speed and cost, because what this is about is literally is, I think she used the term, uh, examin uh, examinership light, and it's from a point of view of viable micro businesses and small businesses that they can be given whatever needs to be given to them from the point of view of ensuring, uh, viab of ensuring that they survive. Um, like that's the reason that we've engaged in, that obviously the state has engaged in some of the business supports um, within the last while. If we talk about the EWSS, if we talk about prior to that the TWSS, if we talk about uh, the CRSS, and there were always particular issues that certain businesses fell between stools, so that, that was a major issue. Now it looks like in relation to the small business assistance scheme and in relation to the business resumption um, scheme as well, uh, that these may deal with some of those issues, as in those companies who did not have rateable uh, premises. So, look, that's very welcome, and we all had the issues in relation to, you know, taxi drivers in particular, in particular, if we talk about the likes of tourism, or we talk about, obviously, hospitality that has been under severe pressure and given not necessarily uh, great news this week. So we need to ensure that we can maintain as, as many businesses and as many jobs as possible into the future. So that's, that's obviously absolutely vital. So uh, I would concur with what Deputy O'Reilly said in relation to we need to ensure that there's protection for creditors, but particularly pr protection for workers. And uh, in relation then to uh, obviously the, the major issue that there has been in the last while in relation to liquidation, that we look at solutions that are absolutely necessary because we have, we have, we have a, a, a long, for the want of a better term, sordid history where we have not protected workers and we're talking about from Cleary's to Debenham's, but, but as Deputy, uh, Deputy O'Reilly said, uh, unfortunately, we have a huge list that we're looking at now, so we need to, have, we, we need to deal with that into the future. But um, seeing as we're talking about the viability and, and ensuring that companies can survive, uh, I think it would be remiss of me not to mention the fact of the absolute public liability insurance crisis that we are in at this point in time. Uh, I remember when Jerry Adams was the TD previously, and um, that myself and himself uh, would have worked uh, a a alongside a particular company in Dundalk who would come to us with where they, their premium was just literally through the roof. And, and in fairness to them, they had come up with possible solutions in relation to um, the, the leisure in industry specifically, but also as related to, let's say, community centres and, and such. So we met with uh, Minister Darcy at the time, and I have since followed that up with Minister Fleming, but particularly with uh, uh, Minister uh, Damien English. Um, and and uh, I would obviously like to thank the ministers for their interaction in relation to this. I do recognise that there are moves being made in relation to the likes of the perjury uh, legislation uh, in relation to the duty of care and obviously where personal responsibility has to, has to come into play. But not only have we, I and many others in, 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 in this chamber been dealing with issues of companies that are being put under the cosh, not only in relation to COVID but in relation to public liability insurance. But at this stage it's got to the level of we have a community centre in Dundalk uh, in Black Rock that was charged the premium of €11,000. Now, in fairness to the community centre and in fairness to the community, um, literally in the money was raised online, a GoFundMe type scenario. But but this isn't viable and it is utterly ridiculous that this is, you know, that we're going to pay through obviously the the charitable and supportive um, actions of a community. 
but that's obviously not how uh, any sort of entity can continue into the future um, and pay for their uh, insurance costs. And th their previous public liability insurance had been €3,000, and it jumped by €8,000. Now, and this is on the basis of their, you know, um, of uh, obviously there are cases where pe people are bringing claims and not to get into the ins and outs of, of those specific issues, but you're dealing with an issue sometime where it relates to an event and there may be a company that was providing material, there may have been a particular organisation that was that had a greater level of involvement to a degree that the claim might never actually land at the door of the community centre. But unfortunately, the, com the invoice and the 11 grand charge is landing at their door. And again, this is another case where it has been said, like there are many cases where we've also seen an absolute failure on the part of, um, we've seen an absolute failure on the part of insurance companies at times to literally to go to court. They just most of the time don't think it's worth their while. And that creates the difficulties that we have now. We all recognise that the new guidelines in relation to payments, that that, that that is a positive move, and we would like to think that that will lead to, uh, to a reduction in the amount that people have to pay in relation to premiums, particularly as regards motor insurance. But we have a specific problem around public liability insurance. And like I'm getting multiple issues of this. I'm getting a community organization um, very, very close to home who have uh, possession of a very small piece of ground. Um, and once again, they would have paid a public liability of insurance of in around 600, and I think at, at the most expensive, 800 uh, euro uh, a year. And now that has jumped to 3,000 euro. So all I see is an absolute crisis where you're going to really impact on the community voluntary sector, on uh, obviously on individual organizations and on a huge amount of businesses and it's just not viable and i am aware obviously that the government has engaged in a piece of work of having conversations with some of these uh, insurance companies because obviously we have an insufficient amount of underwriters as regards public liability insurance but we are at Ab absolute crisis level and we just need to ensure that there is a solution. So um, if the Minister could give any update in relation to, um, as I say, where those conversations are with other underwriters and what solutions there are for the likes of this community centre and obviously these organisations, because uh, some of what I have been dealing with, uh, Minister English, is particular, let's say, guidelines and licensing that would relate to community centres and would also relate to you know, certain aspects of uh, the leisure industry. And what, what the idea of it is that you literally, you, reduce, you, you introduce best practice, you reduce the chance that literally an accident may happen, and at the same time we need to have that action from government from a point of view of ensuring we have more underwriters in the field and that we reduce the chances of spurious claims. But we need this all to happen as soon as possible. Look, um, I've already given my uh, support in relation to the direction that has been given in relation to this piece of legislation. It's absolutely necessary, but um, we need to ensure the viability of, as I say, of the business sector. And it is going to be impossible to do that even post-COVID when we get beyond this point, when we get beyond the point of needing to continue with supports if we do not deal with the absolute crisis that we have as regards public liability insurance.